I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about trigonometric substitution. Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about section 7.4 on trigonometric substitution. And we're going to start with number 17 which asks us to evaluate the integral of the square root of 64 minus x squared dx. Now, we know right off the bat this, that we're going to be using a trigonometric substitution, so we need to know what form are we dealing with here. And we look at this, and this is the form uh, a squared minus x squared. And when we have a form a squared minus x squared, then what we substitute for x is equal to a, which in this case, a squared, this is an 8, uh, sine of theta. So we're going to make the substitution x equals 8 sine of theta. Uh, and then taking the derivative, I get that dx is 8 cosine theta d theta. All right. So the first thing that I did is I figured out what's the form, a squared minus x squared. Then I made the correct substitution, x is 8 sine theta and dx is 8 cosine theta. Now I'm ready to rewrite that integral using this substitution. So let's do it. So I'm going to rewrite this integral. This is equal to the integral of the square root of 64 minus x squared. Well, x is 8 sine of theta. 8 squared is 64. And sine squared theta is sine of theta squared. Then we have dx. And dx is all of this stuff. So I add on times 8 cosine theta d theta. All right. So now I've made my substitution. This is my new integral, and we're ready to go. Uh, first thing I see here is I've got a 64 as a factor on both terms under that square root. I can take that six, factor, that 64, out of these two terms. And in fact, I can take it all the way out of the square root. And when it comes out of the square root, that 64 will be an 8. So I can take that 8 all the way out. And I have an, another 8 here that I could take all the way out. So I'm going to have a 64 on the outside of my integral. Let me rewrite and show you what I'm talking about. So I could rewrite this as 64 times the integral of the square root of, now this is a 1 minus sine squared theta uh, times cosine theta d theta. All right, now we know that 1 minus sine squared of theta is otherwise known as cosine squared theta. So I could rewrite as 64 integral of square root of cosine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. Rewriting again, this is 64 times the square root. The square root of cosine squared theta is just cosine of theta. Times cosine of theta is cosine squared theta d theta. Now, I have integral of cosine of theta to a power that's even. Since the power is even, I need to use the half angle identities. So I could rewrite this guy as 64 times the integral of 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2 d theta. All right, so I just used the half angle identity there. I could bring the 1 half out with the 64 and make that a 32. If I do, then I get 32 times the integral of 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta. Rewriting, I could also write, uh, let's, not rewriting, but let's take an antiderivative we get 32. Antiderivative of 1 is theta. Antiderivative of cosine of 2 theta is sine 
of 2 theta divided by 2 plus c. All right, so we're close here, but we're not quite done. Uh, we have thetas now, and we've taken an antiderivative in, in terms of theta, but we'd like to have our antiderivative in terms of x. And we know that x is 8 sine theta. Okay, knowing that x is equal to 8 sine theta, let me erase this for a second. And let's do a little work over here. So x is 8 sine theta, or another way of saying that is that sine of theta is equal to x divided by 8. Now, if I use a reference triangle here, here's my theta, then sine of theta is the opposite, so x is the opposite over the hypotenuse 8. So this side, if we use the Pythagorean theorem, is going to be 64 minus x squared. And we are going to be able to use this over here. Now, theta we know. Theta we could solve for. Theta is just sine inverse of x over 8. That's easy enough. What about sine of 2 theta? Well, for that one, we need to use another trig identity that says that we could rewrite this as, this is 32 theta plus sine of 2 theta could also be written as 2 sine theta cosine theta. That's a trig identity. And the 2 will cancel with the 2 on the bottom. So this is just sine theta cosine theta plus c. So just use the trig identity. We're almost done. Now I know what sine theta is. Sine theta is x over 8. Cosine of theta, I can figure out using my reference triangle. And so I'm ready to write my answer. And I'll write it right over here. So let's move this up. This is equal to 32 times theta. But theta is sine inverse of x over 8 plus sine of theta. What is sine of theta? Uh, it's x over 8 uh, times cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The adjacent is square root of 64 minus x squared. And the hypotenuse is 8. All of that plus c. Now, I wrote that kind of small. It's not very easy to read. Let me rewrite it one more time. So uh, outside here, we have, I'll multiply the 32 through, and I have, this is equal to 32 sine inverse of x over 8 plus, when I multiply the 32 in, on the bottom we have 64, so I have 32 over 64, or it's just x times the square root of 64 minus x squared over 2 plus c. And we have our answer.